Okay guys, I, I got a grain. I uh, went on a haul here and I got a bunch of grain. Oh yeah. So what we have here is a 50 pound bag of two row, another 50 pound bag of two row, and a 50 pound bag of Vienna malt. On top of that, I've got 50 pounds of two row in here. In these two buckets, or uh, in these two buckets back here, and then I've got about 25 pounds of Crystal 60 because I use that a lot. So I have lots and lots of grain. That's what 150 pounds of two row that I have right now. And um, 50 pounds of Vienna, 25 pounds of Crystal. I have a pound of Centennial hops and a pound of Cascade hops that I picked up. And then I've got new organization here. Um, I've got all my other random grains. Honey, each one of these big ones in the back holds about five pounds. So I got some honey malt, some crystal tin, uh, more Vienna, and then Munich's empty, some rice hulls. We got chocolate in this one, flaked barley, and some more chocolate in that one. So I'm trying to stockpile because I, I mean, I got a good deal on the, Oh, and then we got rye. About two and a half pounds of rye. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to stockpile because I get a, you get a really good deal when you buy in bulk like this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and this music's loud out here having a pool party. I'm gonna go ahead and go up. Um, but yeah, I got the uh, those three big bags, the 150 pounds worth of malt, so two, 100 pounds of two row, 50 pounds of Vienna, a pound of Cascade, and a pound of um, Centennial hops, all of that I got for 150 bucks. So I think that's a pretty good deal because that's 150 pounds worth of grain by itself and then two pounds of hops. So, anyways, that's what happens when you buy in bulk. So, and I've, I've been brewing enough lately that it makes it worth it. So, anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, so uh, we're watching a Virginia Tech football game. F college football's back. <sighs> yep, 31 to zero. Not even halftime yet, but we're playing Appalachian State, so that's pretty obvious. Dogs are fighting over a bone, and I am racking a beer or kegging a beer. Excuse me, I've got my keg here. And it's already sanitized, and I'm sanitizing my racking cane and my tubing, and we'll get on this. Okay, I literally freaking just went and grabbed that, and I heard that we scored again already. Nice. It's a good pass. Logan Thomas is looking good. They're going to review it. Seriously, that was like five seconds, not even 30 seconds after I made that last uh, video there. They scored again. Anyways, all I did was go pick up the beer and bring it in here. This is the Cascade, or not the Cascades, this is the El Dorado Pale Ale. Okay, so we're gonna, we're done with this one and uh, we're ready to keg it. Let me get a smell. Mmm, it smells better than before, at least in the carboy, I don't know. Now, if you watch my last video on racking this beer, you'll see that I wasn't very... I didn't really know what I thought about the beer. It kind of smelled kind of weird. It had a weird taste that I wasn't really... I mean, it was good. It's just this hop. If you look up this hop, they're called El Dorado. If you look them up... Description is candy like flavors, pear, watermelon, cherry. It's pretty ridiculous. I didn't realize that when I brewed it, so I wasn't expecting that. So when I first tasted this, it tasted very w strange to me. But right now, it smells really, really good actually. It's a very like citrusy smelling, which I like in hops. Anyways, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to rack it over. I'm going to take a sample and we'll, we'll taste it. I mean, it might taste a little different. It's kind of got like a, I don't think you can tell. But it's kind of got like a red hue to it. It almost looks, you know, can you see, I wonder if you can see that, that coloring. It looks like a, like red, like a cherry color. Which is kind of interesting. 
because all I used in this one was uh, Crystal 60, Pale Malt, and a little bit of Honey Malt. I think I used, I'll have to go back and look, but I think I used like 8 ounces of Honey Malt and like 4 ounces of Crystal 60. So not much at all. The rest was Pale Malt. But anyways, I'm going to rack this and we'll, we'll come back. Okay, the first thing I'm noticing about this sample is, is crystal clear. I mean, you can't get, I don't know if I've had a beer this clear before. You can see the hydrometer sitting in there. You can see my hand, look at my hand through there. I mean, it's perfectly clear. Other thing I'm noticing is it fermented out pretty good. It's two, it's about 1.08. So, that's pretty good. 1.08 is our final gravity. I can't remember what our starting, I think it was like 1.052, so. You know, we're talking like five, five and a half percent alcohol somewhere in there. So, 1.08, I'll remember that. Let me take this out and we'll do a taste test on the fly here. Let's see what I think about it. So, I can't really show you myself in the. Oh, I can look in the mirror. Well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> so, you're just going to have to. I'm just going to hold this. You can watch the dogs while I do this. Okay, once again, the aroma. It's got, ooh, it's definitely better than before. It's got like a cherry aroma. I can, I can see why they say cherry. I'm getting um, slightly citrusy and slightly cherry flavors in the, in the nose. Like I said, color, very clear, light yellow, or not yellow, but a light golden. Okay, so we're gonna try this. It's mellowed out a lot, which I like. Doesn't have that sharp, bitter flavor that it had before. It's not bad now. It's way better than it was before. It's still kind of one of those, it's so unique that I still don't really know what I feel about it. I probably won't know until I go through a couple pints of this one night. But it's definitely got no off flavors. Mm. Yeah, but there's something in there that's very unique that's different. I've never tasted it before, which is why I'm confused by it, but it's not, this is way better than it was before. This is definitely drinkable. I'm looking forward to this now because it's progressed a lot since the last time we racked it, so I'm wondering how it'll taste after we keg it and let it sit for a few weeks under pressure. So this is, um, this is good news. This is, um, tasting a lot better. I don't know if adding those hops made the difference or what, but this is tasting a lot better. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. So we're going to go ahead and keg this. Um, I won't bother showing you that. I mean, it's just, uh, if you don't know how to keg this, it's just taking the siphon like you normally would, just siphoning into the keg. There's nothing special. So, I'm going to cut the video off here, but um, I'll give you guys an update. I'll be sure to do a review on this one since we've kind of um, tracked the progress of this one from the beginning. But I'm intrigued now. This one, um, it's coming out. Um, better than it was last time, and so I'm looking forward to the next round. Um, it, it's still got a little bit of a sweet honey flavor from that honey malt. Um, I use, like I said, I used a half a pound of honey malt, but I only used four ounces of crystal. I might, if I do this again, reverse those. Give it, because that honey malt's in, you know, it's pretty intense. You don't have to add very much of that to get that sweetness from it. Um, and it can be, you know, overwhelming. It can be sometimes cloyingly sweet if you, if you do it too much. So, um... Next time, I would be interested in switching those to make give it half a pound of crystal to give it more color and more caramel notes. Since it is a pale ale, it needs a little more color than this, I would say. And um, and then backing off on the honey to let the hop shine through a little more than the, the sweetness. But it, it it's it's balanced. That's what's good about this. Um, when I racked it the first time, it was a little too bitter, and that bitterness was not very good. That I didn't like it. I explained that in the last video. Now it's mellowed out that those hop bitterness, um, that hop bitterness has mellowed out a little bit and the weird flavors have mellowed out a little bit. And now it's that sweetness from the honey malt and all the other malts 
is kind of coming into balance with the hops, but the hops still have a presence, a stronger presence. So it's a good balance for a pale ale. So um, interesting beer. So um, I will keg this, and um, and probably I I don't I don't rush carbonate. I usually let it sit under pressure for about a week um, at low pressures. So it won't be for another week or longer until we get to try this, but um, I'll be sure to make a video. So, alright, I know I said I wasn't going to film this, but whatever. We're draining it now. And it is filling up in the bottom of that keg there, as you can see. Okay, so I'm just going to do this, put it in the keg grater and let it sit. Okay, so this is the last step, I put it in the keg grater. This is hard work. This is the inside of my keg grater for those of you who haven't seen it in a while. I put some videos up a long time ago when I first started doing YouTube. Um, showing the inside of this, but um, I have uh, six different temperature or six different gauges to control each keg separately. So I can set different pressures on each of them. Uh, there's five, one, two, three, and then these two down here. And then there's a fifth one, which is this separate tank here, which is a complete different, it's a nitrogen tab. It's this guy on the right. So you can see I got six taps, and on the right is a Guinness style nitrogen tap. It's beer gas. So, this is the inner workings. So, anyways, I got five kegs in here right now. I got a Y yeast Hefeweizen, I got a White Labs Hefeweizen, I got a Pale Ale, I got root beer on the back left there, and then the one right there is what we just put in is our El Dorado Pale Ale. Connected it, connected it up to this. Uh, gas gauge, put it at about 14 PSI, and now we just play the waiting game. Okay, that's all there is to it. So, anyways, oh, I gotta put this back in here. I have this inside that this thing sits on the inside, and it's my my drain bucket. But um, anyways, that's that, man. So. Uh, Look for updates on this beer, um, the El Dorado Pale Ale, Go Virginia Tech, Jake CPU Nut. I know you love this freezer right here, don't you? And uh, anyways, um, we'll, we'll do a review whenever this beer is done. Cheers.